I was traveling Love to this. the Pittsburgh airport, watching the game en route, and three nothing, ten nothing, seventeen nothing. It was just, it was horrendous. It was just one of those days where you step into a pothole and the other team just rolls right over you. And it was thirty three nothing at halftime. So I'm on the plane when it's thirty three nothing, and I turn on airplane mode as instructed. I comply with all FAA regulations. Fly to New York. And somebody said, oh, you don't get the Wi-Fi on the plane? Well, it's above 10,000 feet for like 25 minutes. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You saw my $20 bill earlier. I'm not spending 10 bucks for 25 minutes of Wi-Fi. I've got some shows downloaded on my phone, working my way through Peaky Blinders, and I have to put the, the captions on because I can't understand like 50% or more of what they're saying. Um, so I'll watch some of that. I'll read some of a book. and just kind of relax a little bit, sleep a little bit. So the plane lands... Airplane mode off, again, compliance with all FAA regulations. And I got like 50 text messages. And it's like, well, this is interesting. And I started texting the PFT. They're like, what, what is going, what is happening? So 33 nothing. it wheels up, 36 all when the plane lands. And then I was able to watch the last two minutes of regulation and all of overtime kind of stumbling through LaGuardia Airport trying not to fall down. They got these new escalators that are – like it's like the the old escalator to heaven. I, I mean, they they are so long and so steep. Like if you would fall down there, you would be in heaven or hell. And and so I'm just kind of working my way through there, trying to watch this game. And and I ended up seeing the end of it in the car on the way to the hotel. It's like this is unbelievable what the Vikings were able to do. And this was the moment that Dalvin Cook screen pass for the touchdown. I don't know what 72 is doing. <laughs> I don't think he knows either. But, Miles, I want to back up a play before that because I think that Jeff Saturday cooked his goose with the quarterback sneak on fourth and one. When you have a kicker who made, I think, 17 field goals on the day, my math may be off a little bit on that, but Chase McLaughlin was nailing them all day. It's a dome. It's a 53-yarder. He had made one of similar distance, almost identical distance earlier. Instead, they do the 37-year-old headed to the glue factory quarterback who is, I mean, he's somewhere between the Scarecrow and the Tin Man. I'm not sure which one. But you don't send him into the line of scrimmage with no one pushing him from behind. And he's holding the ball at his hip when he should be reaching it out. And he doesn't make it. What, what's that call? What's, what are you doing there? Kick the field goal or punt. You don't, you don't just hand the ball back in that spot to the Vikings and and on the next play the Vikings made him pay for it tied it up and and that was that unbelievable and and I watched the second half of that game yesterday it never really felt inevitable it never felt like there was this avalanche coming it was just kind of like the Vikings were hanging around and they were hanging around and they scored a touchdown here and a, a touchdown there and all of a sudden it's a one score game like hey look at that and they get screwed by the the bad call with the fumble that should have been a touchdown it should have been tied up with you know four or five more minutes left than there were when it was finally tied up, but it's just unbelievable. Never seen anything like it, and it felt so different from the Bills-Oilers playoff game from early 1993 because that felt like the Bills, like here it comes, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. It never really felt like that until it was tied up. And it's like, oh, there it is. They're tied up, and uh, let's see if they can go win it, and they did. I don't know. It's starting to feel like that to me. You know, once you get the second touchdown, it wasn't the first touchdown, but then the Colts just couldn't move the damn ball. And then you see what happened there on that particular play as we're showing it right now with the fumble that was recovered and had a clear recovery and should have been a touchdown. It was, it was another one of those really, really bad officiating calls where they are supposed to let the play run because all turnovers are reviewed. Right. I mean, this is something that we see pretty much every week now. And that wasn't even close. The ball's out while well, he wasn't review. falling down. He's standing up. I know it was yeah. a horrendous call to make him down by contact in the first place. But yes, the ball was, was out. The ball was very clearly out before any part of the body was close to the ground. So that made it even worse. So I think at that point, it was kind of like, yeah, well, the, the Vikings are going to do this. I mean, the Colts, man, I guess this is what happens when you hire an interim coach who's never coached before, except for in high school. I, I don't know. I mean, the, the, but that was, that was one of the most embarrassing things I've ever seen on a football field and poor Matt Ryan to be on the losing end of two of the most embarrassing things that have ever happened in NFL history. Steve Smith, 
said during the NFL Network coverage of the Dolphins-Bills game that Jeff Saturday should be the first interim head coach to be fired while he's the interim head coach. Not that Jim Irsay is going to do that, but with Jim Irsay, you can't rule out anything. I do think that Saturday squandered his chance. I think he went from, at halftime, being the guy to, by the end of the game, being not the guy. Remember when he got the job, he said, hey, this is an opportunity to audition for the other teams. Audition's not going. For, and I'm so, I'm not taking any glee in this. Right. It's All you had to do in that spot was kick no, the field goal real. or punt. You, 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 that's not the play you call in that spot. With a 37-year-old quarterback who looks malnourished, frankly, you don't run him in to the line of scrimmage. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.